Let us bring in New York City Councilman Joe Borelli. Joe, lots of questions for you. Let's start with Joe. One, why didn't Joe visit the migrant camp? But, okay, let's say he didn't want to go to the hotel. Why didn't he visit the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal where Mayor Adams laid out the red carpet for these migrants? Well, that's a great question. I mean, we know Joe was here to have a photo op. That's fine. That's great. He's not the first president to come to New York City for uh, a photo op to tout some positive things he's doing. Uh, and you're right. Uh, why wouldn't he come to the, the Herc, as it's called, uh, set up by Mayor Adams to actually accommodate the failure that starts from his border and ends in Brooklyn and, and see the work that's being done on the front lines by, by some decent people in New York City uh, who feel responsible for take care of, uh, of the uh, food and shelter needs of all these these migrants. It's unfortunate he chose not to do that. Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I just wish some of these sand hogs who he met in the tunnel uh, might have helped him separate his head from being buried. Yeah, he was only a mile away. This was a perfect opportunity if he didn't really want to travel all the way down to the border to see what his lack of leadership at the southern border has caused and how it's trickled all the way up to New York City. But Joe, I, I want to talk about uh, the law enforcement aspect of this because in uh, Todd, he was out there yesterday morning for Fox and Friends and we mentioned that there were police standing around. Do you think that this is diverting police and what they're supposed to be doing for the tax paying city, the New York City taxpayers, and we're diverting it really to the migrants? And is it just kind of muddying up the situation even more? Well, it certainly is. And we're already facing a budget crisis that is putting a squeeze on the NYPD uh, and every agency in the New York City uh, uh, budget, basically the Parks Department to, to the Police Department. Uh, and yes, uh, dozens of officers are assigned to watch some of these migrants, whether we're talking about those at the Watson Hotel uh, or we're talking about the ones that, that occupy another several dozen buildings throughout the city. So it's squeezing our budget, it's squeezing our resources. Uh, and that's why I think you see Mayor Adams so strong come out against uh, what's been happening. Uh, he's been fairly clear, let, let's be honest. He said weeks ago that the inn is full, meaning the city can no longer lease any new hotel rooms. There aren't any new, new hotels to lease. So when, when you hear something about uh, how women and children are being given priority to these hotel rooms, but they're asking single men to go to a sort of a congregate shelter, this seems entirely reasonable to almost anybody but these wild, crazy leftist activists who really just just want to get more money for nonprofits in New York City and change housing policy. John, I'm glad you mentioned the activists because being out there yesterday, it was clear the activists were running the show. It's something the New York Post picked up on as well. They say migrants aren't the only problem in the standoff. So are the liberal activists whispering in their ears and pushing them not to leave the hotel. Joe, you yourself are a New York City taxpayer. What do you make of the gall of these migrants and these activists to say that what we are giving them isn't good enough. Well, this is straight out of the lefty playbook, uh, and, and it's not even the upper class work. It's sort of the freshman level intro stuff. Uh, what they do is they come out and they say uh, everything is the result of a racist, evil society, even our own uh, shelter plan for these migrants. Uh, and the only solution is more funding, uh, more resources going to these these shelters that are coincidentally often run by the same nonprofits. So I'm not surprised. We see this all over the place. Uh, and uh, really, these, these nonprofit and advocate organizations Organizations have accumulated a, a large number, a large amount of power in New York City uh, and other large cities in America. So they are playing these migrants as pawns. I'm sure there are some very decent people who are being influenced by them. Uh, and unfortunately, though, if you're a migrant and you're seeing a pretty good track record with these advocacy groups, because the city is, is, is basically bending down to their every need and whim. So I'm not really one ever to praise Eric Adams, but at least he is going out there trying to be like, hey, move to this shelter that we have set up for you. But my question, even though New York City is a sanctuary city, these migrants are saying this is not good enough for us. We're going to keep camping out in front of these hotels, causing chaos for people, You know, because really this is not fair to New Yorkers having to walk through this every single day. But is there anything he can do to say if it's not a good enough, you can leave? Or is it because the sanctuary city is in place, they can't be expelled in any way, shape or form? 
Well, well, right. No, they certainly cannot be expelled, but we can offer them tickets on a bus to anywhere they want to go. And I think that's a point that's not being said, is that none of these people have a gun to their head. None of these people are being forced to stay anywhere. Uh, all of these folks, if they believe they can get better resources and better shelter uh, and a job or something elsewhere, they are all free to leave. And the city of New York would provide them with transportation to whichever final destination they choose. So th they are staying here because uh, the, the, the golden goose is pretty good here in New York. We have a right to shelter law, which the mayor is constrained by. So he is under some obligation to provide the bare necessities. And I think that's what he's actually trying to do by opening up this large shelter. Again, we're saying to women and children, you can stay in the hotel rooms. We're simply asking single men who are here by themselves, maybe you can go to a larger facility uh, that can accommodate more people uh, and hopefully at a lower cost to New Yorkers. Yeah, once again, it's going to come back on the taxpayer, the American taxpayer. Joe Borelli, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thanks, Joe.